Robotics is moving so fast, it's unreal. In the United States, scientists just built robots that can literally change shape. One second it's walking on four legs, the next it's crawling like a bug. In China, a rice-sized robot sprints on water and carries more than twice its weight. Korea is about to drop a humanoid with a real AI brain. And Hollywood just launched its first digital actress. We've never seen anything like this. So let's break it down. Let's kick off with a breakthrough from the United States that feels like a whole new direction for robotics. Researchers at UC Berkeley working with Carnegie Mellon and Georgia Tech have built what they call Metatrust robots. Think of a robot skeleton made from tons of little beams and joints, except this skeleton doesn't stay fixed. It bends twists and reshapes itself into completely different forms. One moment it can be a four-legged walker, the next it folds into a crawler, and in theory it could even be something like a helmet that shifts its shape to protect different parts of your head. Instead of robots being stuck in one body, these things can literally reconfigure themselves depending on what you need them to do. The real challenge with this kind of design has always been control. The more actuators you add, the harder it gets to manage. Up to now, engineers had to group them manually into networks, which was slow, repetitive work and definitely not something that scaled well. And that's where the Berkeley team changed things. They used a genetic algorithm, a system that tests different setups and evolves toward the best solution, to figure out the minimum number of control units you actually need. Instead of running hundreds of independent channels, the algorithm narrows it down to a balance point where the robot can still walk, reshape itself, or even handle objects, but without drowning in complexity. The prototypes they showed off were impressive. One moved like a lobster, another worked more like a tentacle, and both could pull off complex transformations while using far fewer control channels than expected. Zenjogu, one of the lead researchers, said it's basically the same principle as muscle groups in the human body. We don't fire every fiber separately, our bodies run muscles in coordinated bundles. The AI here is doing the same thing with actuators, and the team was surprised at just how effective it turned out to be. They started small, testing locomotion and trying to make a robot run faster, but the framework quickly grew into a complete system for designing morphing machines. And they're already pushing it further. The next step is to add generative AI into the process so you could feed in your own body dimensions and let the system design not just a custom morphing helmet, but also the control logic behind it. Long term, the vision goes even further. Yao from Berkeley's Morphing Matter Lab talks about everyday objects that can morph on demand. Hospital sheets that reposition patients or even act like a massage system. Chairs that automatically adjust to your posture. Or wearables that shift shape depending on what you're doing. At that point, the line between robot and everyday object basically disappears. Now let's scale down dramatically. Because over in China, researchers are doing something completely different but just as groundbreaking. A team at Guangdong University of Technology and Guan Polytechnic Normal University built a soft robot that weighs only 8 milligrams, lighter than a grain of rice, and despite being so small, this little machine can respond to three environmental triggers at once. Heat, humidity, and magnetism. That's important because most soft robots up until now could only respond to a single trigger, like heat or light. The moment you tried mixing signals, everything clashed and the robot stopped working properly. This team solved that by building the robot like a sandwich, with three layers. The bottom layer is a polyamide film that's been chemically treated so it reacts to both heat and humidity. On top of that, they added silicone rubber filled with tiny neodymium iron boron magnetic particles, which makes it respond to magnetic fields. Put it all together and each layer reacts to its own signal without interfering with the others. That's what makes it so reliable. The performance is kind of shocking for its size. On water, it can move at 9.66 centimeters per second, which is basically the speed you see from real whirligig beetles. On land, it switches into a rolling gait when driven by a rotating magnetic field, letting it climb slopes and cross mixed terrain seamlessly. It can even carry two and a half times its own body weight, which is massive for a robot that tiny. In a demo, they had it pick up a small pebble, carry it across land and water, then drop it using a pulse of near-infrared light to trigger a shape change, and finally retreat under magnetic control. That's a full pickup, transport, and delivery cycle at the milligram scale. Applications are obvious. Swarms of these robots could inspect underwater structures, monitor wetlands, help in disaster response, or maybe even work inside the human body one day. The researchers pointed out that soft robotics has already been booming. Teams in South Korea built magnetic swarms that unclog tubes, 
but this is the first time you've got multi-response behavior in one single tiny machine. That's what unlocks new environments. Now let's jump to the other extreme, full humanoids. In Korea, the Korea Institute of Science and Technology working with LG is about to unveil a new robot called Capex this November. It runs on LG's Exa one Vision language model, giving it a brain that doesn't just copy movements, but actually learns and adapts in real time. Capex comes with human-level abilities, including a multi-finger hand with tactile sensitivity close to real touch. It trains through reinforcement learning and vision language inputs. And the big selling point is what they call physical AI, learning directly in the real world instead of just inside simulations. That makes it far more practical for industries like logistics, healthcare, and manufacturing. Right now, the United States and China dominate humanoids, but Korea is clearly trying to stake its own claim. The plan is field demos and commercialization within four years, and by building core parts like high-output actuators at home, Korea is also cutting dependence on foreign suppliers. So KPX isn't just about tech, it's a national play for leverage in the humanoid race. And while Korea pushes robots for industry, Hollywood is testing AI in entertainment. At the Zurich Summit, a London studio called Particle 6 introduced a virtual actress named Tilly Norwood, marketed as the next Scarlett Johansson. She's got brown eyes, a British accent, My genes are binary. Her own Instagram, and made her debut in a parody sketch called AI Commissioner. The video hit 600,000 views, but most people hated it. Comments slammed it as creepy, awkward, and glitchy, with stiff dialogue and even blurred teeth. Even so, Particle 6 claims interest is rising and talent agents are starting to circle, but the backlash is strong. S-A-G-A-F-T-R-A, -A -A, which represents 160,000 United States performers, called her nothing more than a software product built on the backs of real actors without consent or pay. This ties straight back to the union battles in 2023 and 2024, where AI protections were front and center. Ministry experts also doubt synthetic stars will ever replace real ones. Yves Birdquist from USC's Entertainment Technology Center pointed out that human celebrities bring built-in fan bases, while AI characters don't. Studios already use AI for effects like de-aging or digital doubles, but going fully synthetic might not click with audiences. Still, Tilly Norwood is now the test case for whether Hollywood ever accepts AI-only stars. Here's something to think about. If you had those bug-sized robots and shape-shifting machines, how would you use them? Let me know your best ideas in the comments. I'd love to see what you come up with. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.